good morning all of you in the previous session we have discussed about homo junction leds and hetero junction leds so in that regard we also discussed about two types of leds what are those surface emitting led another one is edge emitting led okay so now today we will discuss few more topics related to leds and we will try to close the leds concepts by today's class so in the previous class we have seen the construction of surface emitting led and edge emitting led today we will try to discuss some differences between the two leds so here i have given some points related to the differences between two leds so the first one is surface emitting led another one is edge emitting led so compared to edge emitting led surface emitter or surface emitting led radiates more power radiates more power okay the second one is surface emitter emitter leds couple more power into large numerical aperture optical fibers okay what is the surface emitting led is couple more optical power into large numerical aperture optical fibers whereas edge emitter led is couple more optical power into optical fibers having less numerical aperture so the modulation bandwidth is less in surface emitting led whereas <coughs> modulation bandwidth is in the order of hundreds of megahertzs in the edge emitting leds the surface emitting led is less temperature dependent okay whereas edge emitting led has more is more temperature dependent means the heat sink the availability of heat sink is uh, 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 the requirement of heat sink is more in the if an edge emitting led because it, the, it is it is more temperature dependent okay so the temperature the inside temperature of the structure of the edge emitting led should be controlled by the heat sink okay because the radiation is depending upon the temperature also in case of a edge emitting led whereas surface emitting led it is less temperature dependent okay so these are some of the differences between surface emitting led and edge emitting led let us see what are the various light source materials what are the various light source materials so we already studied about two types of semiconductor materials which are used as optical sources okay what are those direct band gap semiconductor material indirect band gap semiconductor material out of these generally direct band gap out of these generally direct band gap semiconductor materials have more radiative property okay they are more they have more recombination rate okay compared to indirect band gap semiconductor materials so in such case the direct band gap materials which fall in third group and fifth group of elements are generally preferred in manufacturing surface emitting led or edge emitting led okay so if you see the third group elements what are those aluminum gallium indium generally the these elements these three elements aluminum or gallium or indium are preferred from third group elements which are direct band gap semiconductor materials okay as an alloy as an alloy keep this in your mind next fifth group elements are phosphorus arsenic and strontium are generally preferred as an alloy from fifth group for direct band gap materials so when you add these kind of materials to the semiconductor generally the radiative recombination rate generally increases when the radiative recombination rate increases the quantum efficiency increases when the quantum efficiency increases the brightness or radiation 
is increased okay so generally if you see here gallium aluminium arsenide gallium aluminium arsenide is an alloy used to operate in 800 to 900 nanometer spectrum 800 to 900 nanometer spectrum that is gallium aluminium is mixed with arsenic okay right next we go for quantum efficiency <coughs> so what is meant by quantum efficiency in the previous session we have discussed quantum efficiency means quantum efficiency means the number of uh, carriers that is uh, uh, the number of electron hole pair recombined to produce photon to produce photon is called as quantum efficiency okay so for an led or for an optical source if the brightness or if the radiation the radiation should be more means the quantum efficiency should be more that means uh, the number of uh, electron hole pair recombination should be more okay but if you see in generally practically practically that is what okay ideally sorry ideally but practically all the leds in all the leds okay the recombination rate is not same okay so what is happening here some electron hole pairs will recombine and emit radiation in the form of photons okay but some electron hole pairs recombine but do not emit any radiation so here there are two cases one is a radiation okay uh, <clears throat> one is a radiative electron hole pair recombination non radiative electron hole pair recombination okay then the quantum efficiency how the quantum efficiency is calculated okay so we need to consider these two cases one is a, what is that radiative recombination uh, carriers non radiative recombination carriers so you can see here if the radiative recombination rate is say rr consider it, is, it as radiative recombination rate and non radiative recombination rate is rnr r n r okay then the quantum efficiency generally we call it as internal quantum efficiency internally internally inside the material how many number of electron hole pairs are recombined this is what is actually uh, we are looking into it so this is everything is happening internally inside the material so we are we are we are we are uh, naming it as internal quantum efficiency okay so it is given as nita int internal quantum efficiency is equal to rr by rr means radiative recombination rate by rr plus rnr means radiative recombination rate plus non radiative recombination rate okay okay r you can rewrite the same equation in another form okay in terms of a lifetime of the carriers in terms of lifetime of the carriers how nita ind that is internal quantum efficiency equal to tau by tau r what is tau actually tau means non radiative recombination lifetime okay tr tau r means radiative recombination lifetime okay tau means non radiative recombination lifetime tau r means radiative recombination lifetime so you can express the internal quantum efficiency of a of an led in terms of a radiative recombination rate non radiative recombination rate that is rr and rnr or in terms of lifetime of the radiative as well as non radiative carriers what is that lifetime means it is generally indicated by tau this is tau tau okay so tau r means the tau r means radiative recombination lifetime tau means non radiative recombination lifetime okay we go for next topic that is modulation 
of an LED. So there is a definition here in, in terms of electrical behavior, modulation bandwidth, modulation we call it as modulation bandwidth here, modulation bandwidth of an LED. Modulation bandwidth is defined as point where electrical power is dropped to 50% of its or half of the maximum power half of the maximum power modulation bandwidth is defined as the point where electrical power is dropped to half of or 50% of the maximum value okay is called as modulation bandwidth okay so modulation bandwidth generally depends upon three parameters of an led what are those one is doping level okay that is gallium that is aluminium these are all the external materials which are added to the arsenic semiconductor material okay you call this gallium third group elements or phosphorus from the fifth group elements generally you call it as a okay uh, doping atoms okay doping materials so modulation bandwidth depends upon doping level and the second one is injected carriers and the third one is parasitic capacitance of the device another one is parasitic capacitance of the device okay internally what is the capacitance offered by the device is also affecting the modulation bandwidth okay so the output electrical power is generally expressed as 10 log p of omega by p naught okay 10 log p of omega by p naught and the bandwidth is given as 0.35 by tr okay so let us see what is p of omega output power of the device p of omega is output power of the device what is p naught p naught is power emitted at the zero modulated frequency okay then what is tr rise time what is in by tr rise time okay so using these parameters you can calculate the output electrical power you can calculate the output electrical power okay so let us revise what we have discussed now so we have discussed led structures two types of led structures one is surface emitting led and edge emitting led okay so surface emitter generally surface emitting led radiates more power compared to edge emitting led that is the first advantage second one is surface emitters couple more optical power into optical fibers having large numerical aperture large numerical aperture okay next edge emitting leds couple more optical power into the optical fibers having low numerical aperture the modulation bandwidth offered by the surface emitting led is less whereas edge emitting led is more the surface emitting led leds are less temperature dependent whereas edge emitting leds are more temperature dependent that is the reason it is necessary to care to take care of the rise of temperature in the structure of the edge emitting led by providing appropriate heat sink next one is light source materials okay so we know that there are two types of materials direct band gap material indirect band gap material generally direct band gap materials have high radiative property compared to indirect band gap material so that is the reason generally direct band gap materials are preferred preferred in constructing the in constructing the light sources like leds okay so what are those direct band gap materials third group element and fifth group elements are called as direct band gap direct band gap materials what are third group are aluminium gallium indium what are fifth group phosphorus arsenic and strontium okay so the combination galas okay is used to generally that combination is used to uh, fabricate the led to operate in 800 to 900 nanometer spectrum range what is meant by quantum efficiency the number of electron hole pairs recombined to emit the photons or to emit the light 
is called as quantum efficiency. If the if the carriers are recomb recombined carriers are more, then quantum efficiency is more. But actually, practically, all LEDs do not radiate do not radiate after recombination. Some LEDs, some electron hole base uh, will some electron hole base will emit radiation after recombination. Some will not emit radiation after recombination. So here the efficiency is depending upon radiative carriers as well as non-radiative carriers. So that is the reason efficiency is given as RR, the radiative recombination rate divided by RR plus RNR. What is RNR? Non-radiative recombination rate. Okay. The same thing can also be given as tau by tau r. What is tau? Non-radiative recombination lifetime. Okay. What is tau r? Radiative recombination lifetime. Next one is modulation bandwidth of an LED. It is defined as the point where electrical power has dropped to half of the maximum value. Okay. It depends upon, modulation bandwidth depends upon three factors. What are those? Doping level. Another one is injected carriers. Another one is parasitic effect of the device. Output electrical power is calculated with the formula 10 log P of omega by P naught and also bandwidth as 0.35 by TR. What is P of, P of omega output power of the device? P naught that is power emitted at the zero modulated frequency TR means rise time. Okay. So in the next class we will try to uh, start laser diodes. Okay. Till this we have completed the concept of LEDs. Okay. There are some problems, mathematical problems related to the LEDs. Okay. We will try to uh, discuss those problems also in the coming classes. But in the next class we will try to discuss start the start ILDs that is injection laser diodes. Thank you.